Welcome to worship this 16th week after Pentecost, September 25, 2022. Consideration and care for those in need, especially those who are at our gate, visible to us, of whom we are aware and we see, perhaps daily, is an essential component of good stewardship. It is in the sharing of wealth, our resources, that we avoid the snare of wealth, the snare of our resources. It is the one whom death could not hold, who comes to us risen from the dead, who can free us from the death grip of greed. This is the one of many spiritual gifts that Jesus gives to us. This is our theme for today's worship. Let us pray together. God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another, keep our feet from evil pathways, turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of Luke, the 16th chapter. There was a rich man who had dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, who was covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, Remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, Neither will, be they, will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This week on Monday, as we all began our work week, I'm sure that you heard the same news that I heard about the West Seattle Bridge opening up. After uh, a very long time, many months, uh, this bridge was repaired and co commuters were able to go straight from their homes across the bridge into Seattle proper. And there was so much happiness and celebrating. It was really fun to listen to as people were interviewed. Some commuters that I heard who were interviewed talked about how their commute time without the bridge would increase uh, their time in their car 30 minutes to an hour uh, each way that they were driving. So a significant amount of time was added uh, to their commutes from West Seattle around into Seattle proper. And so it was such a wonderful thing when the bridge was opened this week and people were able to return to a shorter route into the city. It was fun to hear in the background as people were being interviewed, music, uh, there was dancing and good food, and even a local brewery uh, brewed a special kind of beer 
uh, for the occasion. It brought to mind the chasm that we had between West Seattle and Seattle proper, this chasm, uh, when I read the scripture for today. Many things have the capacity to separate us in life, right? Separating us from God, separating us from each other. This parable is very uh, open and honest about how we are separated by resources, status, material possessions that are uh, considered valuable in our culture and society. And 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 says the following about this kind of a predicament. He says, of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Lazarus, the rich man, the chasm that separated them, how quickly our life is filled with chasms. The rich, the poor, the haves, the have-nots, those who have access to good technology, those who don't, transportation issues, mental health, accessibility to uh, good food. So many things separate us in our lives. And so often these separations are what guide us in our decision making, where we live, where we have our education, where we raise our children, where we seek out neighborhoods, where we seek out friends. Again, the writer of 1 Timothy says, and as Jesus teaches us today, we need to stay awake and rededicate ourselves to looking at these different chasms that we experience and we must work consistently to be unified, to build bridges over these chasms that exist. The late Francis Schaeffer in his book entitled, How Should We Then Live? writes this quote that speaks to our predicament today. He says, biblical orthodoxy, so sticking strictly to Bible and scripture, and that's your only means to faith. Without compassion is surely the ugliest thing in the world. Jesus taught that the mark of the Christian is the observable love shown among all true believers. Let your actions speak of your faith. It can't just be written words on a page in a paper that we keep just inside of us. Our faith must be lived. We must always be working at building bridges across those chasms that we have in our life. We need to also come to terms with the tensions that exist with our basic need to survive and how we are tempted and how we thirst to acquire more than we need. Actions must be guided by compassion. Think about that. Compassion means we are with one another in our times of suffering or struggle. Compassion means we listen, we problem solve together, we're patient with one another, we seek to find solutions that bring life, we look out for the vulnerable and those in need. Actions must be guided by compassion. So consider the following. If you're doing well in today's market and economy, the first thing is to be humble. If you're doing well today, you, myself included, have had luck, privileges, advantages, options, opportunities that millions in the world can only dream of. Even if your work uh, 
was really hard and you had to work really hard to get to what you have, you have an advantage. And so humility goes a long way. Again, uh, Timothy says, as for those who in the present age are rich, commend them not to be haughty. Second thing after being humble is be realistic. There are no guarantees in life. The market may crash tomorrow. Who could have predicted the outcome of the coronavirus on the economy? If you practiced a policy of contentment in uh, these past couple of years, you're in a better uh, situation to weather the storm of the economy as it may come in the future. When we are realistic, our peace and our stability are not tied to our financial situation alone. Third, after be humble and be realistic, be generous. I'm so grateful that our congregation, Holy Trinity, is such a generous and sharing congregation. We live uh, that as a community together, and it's a great way for us to live. We also, though, live in a sharing economy. Charitable works, giving back to the community, really is a part of our culture and society these days. We are invited, as we reflect on scripture today, to be a part of that, to join alongside, to accompany one another, being generous. And the fourth thing, after be humble, be realistic, and be generous, the fourth thing is be faithful. Watch for any signs in your heart and your mind that you're starting to love money or your material possessions alone. This is the root that can make a lot of things go awry in our life, as it says in verse 10 from uh, Timothy's writings today. Instead of lusting after riches and the next thing that we can acquire, we are encouraged to pursue righteousness, which is that right relationship with God. We are encouraged to, to pursue godliness, to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, to practice faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. What does that look like for you as an individual? or your family, or your community. Many things can separate us, build a big chasm between ourselves, God, and one another. A lot of things can affect us to drive us apart. Often we look at these chasms and we think, no way can I take that on. I just don't have enough in me, or I don't have enough resources to make that happen. I couldn't possibly cross over to the other side. Jesus encourages us differently. Walk those chasms as people of faith. And so that's what I encourage you to do. Anytime you face a chasm in your life, practice your faith. Remember that Jesus has built a bridge for you between life and death, between sin and forgiveness, judgment and grace, marginalization and acceptance. Jesus did this for you when he died on the cross and was raised on Easter morning. This gives us the ability that that mystery of faith, that power that says, it looks really intimidating, but I'm going to try to cross this chasm. First Timothy encourages us to be rich in good works, to be rich in our generosity, and to be ready to share with others so that others may also take hold of the life that really and truly is life. Welcome back, West Seattle. We're glad to have that bridge that unites us. And for each of us listening to the sermon today, keep building bridges of faith and practice faithful, bold generosity. Amen.
Now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O God, rich in mercy, fill your church with righteousness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Empower the baptized by your spirit to be rich in good works and ready to share. We know we cannot do this if our hearts and minds are trapped by senseless and harmful desires for wealth that plunge people into ruin and destruction. We may wander away and pierce ourselves with many pains. Instead, let us do good, be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, and store up for ourselves the true treasure. Protect the earth and its creatures. Provide food, water, shelter, and favorable habitats, especially for endangered species. Preserve threatened ice caps, glaciers, parks, and beaches. Increase justice in nations, the United Nations, local governments and courtrooms. Guide lawyers and those who hold public office to act with compassion and discernment. We pray especially for peace in Ukraine and a reawakening for the people of Russia. Give food to the hungry, set the captives free, Lift up those who are bowed down. Watch over the stranger, the other. Tend to those who are ill or contending with infirmity, especially Michael, Loretta, Bernice, David, Denny, Brian, Gloria, Gordon, Kirsten, Barbara, Nancy, Cecil, Joe, Joanne, Nancy, Nancy, Marilyn, the family of Marlene Falquist, and those we name now. Stir us to act in the best interest of our neighbors. Enfold the saints who have died in the arms of your loving care. Grant that the holy angels accompany us and bring us to eternal life with them in the light of your presence. Now into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray now using the words that he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.